announcements before we begin Mass. Tickets for the fall dinner may be obtained at the parish office. There is more information in the bulletin. The Mass in the Vineyard this month will be celebrated on Tuesday, October 1st at 7 p.m. There's a little twist this month. The uh, Mass is not going to be held at a winery. It's actually going to be held at the Finger Lakes Distillery. They asked if they could host, and so we will be there this Tuesday. If you have never attended a Mass, I invite you to join us Tuesday evening at 7 at the Finger Lakes Distillery on Route 414. And if you have attended in the past, I invite you to return and bring the guest with you. St. Mary's Mass book will open this Thursday at 9 a.m. at the parish office. Intentions will be taken for November and December Masses. Next Sunday is Respect Life Sunday. A second collection called Change for Life will be taken up. Next Sunday at 1 p.m., the Pep Blessing will take place here in the church courtyard. There's more information in the bulletin. Youth ministry for those in grades 7 to 12 begins next Sunday evening at 6 p.m. in the Lincoln Chapel area here at St. Mary's. For those who are in grades 7 to 12, we invite you to please join us. If you know someone who would like to learn more about the Catholic faith, please contact either Deacon Tom or Deacon Dana. The first RCIA session is scheduled to begin on Sunday, October 20th from 11.30 to 12.30. This Friday is First Friday, and we will have exposition and adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. There is a sign-up list here just outside the sacristy. Please make sure all of the times with the Lord are covered. And if I could give a brief restoration update. At St. Benedict's, we have bids for the stucco work and the vinyl work for the uh, sockets, the fascia board, and the frame around the rose window. So hopefully that work will begin in the next week to week and a half. At St. Mary's, the painting of the church is finished. We did hit some delays because of weather, uh, so it stretched down a little bit longer than we had hoped and expected, but it is over, and so we are grateful that our church and office complex look so beautiful. We have also begun the first phase of the electric campaign. Um, the service has been run from the transformer on the pole to the basement of the church and the wiring over to the center. Um, we need to get um, new circuit breaker boards, switchboards in the sacristy here and over in the center. As soon as that work is done, we'll start the wiring above the ceiling here in church to come down to the ceiling lights. It's been a point of contention with a lot of the electricians. They're just afraid of literally falling through the, the ceiling. And so we're going to have to take special care in preserving the ceiling area while they do that work. When that's done, we'll see how much we have left and what other work needs to be done in terms of the electric. So phase one is complete. Phase two will begin as soon as possible. There was a book of requests at the back of the church to record your special intentions and pray for these intentions daily. And here in the Schuyler Catholic community, we have a custom at the end of Mass at the end of the recessional hymn, we kneel and silently pray three Hail Marys for the next one among us to be called home by God. We invite you to join us in that prayer this morning. And please make sure your cell phones are in a silent mode for the remainder of the Mass. Our opening hymn this morning is number 718, oh, excuse me, it's number 496 in the gathered hymnal, number 496. And the readings can be found on page 132 in the Sunday's Word Miss Lent. I invite you now to please join us in our call to worship again.
occupation with acquiring more and more material goods. Our celebration today is a good reminder that we need to remember those who are being left behind. Let us pause and take now time to pray today for the ability to see beyond the distractions of the things we possess to recognize our brothers and sisters in And now let us take a moment to welcome and greet those around us. You are seated at the right hand of the 
God, who manifests your almighty power, above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us, and make those hastening to attain your promise heirs to the treasures of heaven. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to be seated as I invite my young friends forward for dismissal for their own liturgy of the word. You're going out because you guys get to talk about Jesus and how much he loves you. Is that okay? I hope so. Wow, we got some coming up on the side. Some more coming up in the middle. Wow. Do you know guys know how awesome you are? You guys are like real cool. You know that? But the coolest one of all is Jesus. And he tells a story today in the gospel that helps us remember the people around us, the boys and girls, who maybe don't have what we have. So we have to remember how to share with them and show them the love of God. So may Almighty God open your ears, your minds, and your hearts, and ears, minds, and hearts of all of us to hear His Word and to live it in our lives. So may God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, we'll see you guys later. Mm -hmm. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Thus says the Lord, the God of hosts, Woe to the complacent in Zion, lying, lying upon beds of ivory, stretched comfortably on their couches. They eat lambs taken from the flock and calves from the stall. Improvising to the music of the harp, like David, they devise their own accompaniment. They drink wine from bowls and anoint themselves with the best oils. Yet they are not made ill by the collapse of Joseph. Therefore, now they shall be the first to go into exile, and their wanton revelry shall be done away with. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial song this morning is Psalm 146, Happy Purim, page 139.
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. But you, man of God, pursue righteousness, devotion, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. Compete well for the faith. Lay hold of eternal life to which you were called when you made a noble confession in the presence of many witnesses. I charge you before God, who gives life to all things, and before Christ Jesus, who gave testimony under Pontius Pilate for the noble confession, to keep the commandment without stain or reproach until the appearance of our Lord Jesus Christ and the, the blessed and only ruler will make manifest at the proper time the King of kings and Lord of lords who alone has immortality, who dwells in unapproachable light and whom no human being has seen or can see. To him, be honor and eternal life. Amen. The word of the Lord.
Last week and this week, our first reading is from the book of the prophet Amos. And I think it would behoove us to have a little background about who Amos is and why he's writing. Amos lived when there were two separate kingdoms of Israelites. The northern kingdom, named Israel, and a southern kingdom named Judah. He was born in the southern kingdom and worked as a shepherd and a tree trimmer. But God called him to preach to the northern kingdom. Amos was not an official prophet of the king's court, so he was free to speak against the king and the court and to be brutally honest in delivering God's message. Among the Old Testament prophecies, Amos are the least hopeful. Amos stresses that Israel's destruction Complete and total is certain. He condemns Israel for its failure to be faithful to the covenant. But he has a special anger toward the king, the priest, and the wealthy class. He accuses them of being hypocrites who lead the people of Israel astray while pretending to be faithful themselves. What was Amos' evidence? First, the covenant demanded special care for the poor, the outcast, and the marginalized. The king, the wealthy, and some of the priests were ignoring this demand. Instead of caring for the poor and the lowly, the wealthy were cheating them and treating them unjustly. Second, with monies they cheated out of the poor, the ruling class and the wealthy staged lavish ceremonies to God that were modeled on ceremonies honoring foreign gods. They went through the motions of worshiping God, but they ignored the demand to care for their neighbor. For Amos, this was the heart of Israel's hypocrisy, its sinful habit of separating its religious rituals from concern for its citizens. This phoniness was repulsive to God, and because of Israel's sin, God brought it to destruction. Amos is rightly called the prophet of the Lord's justice. So Amos has nothing to do in terms of being a prophet until God calls him out of his ordinary life, to prophesy against the northern kingdom of Israel. And basically, he attacks the king, the priests, and the wealthy because they are treating the poor unjustly and using the monies that they extort from the poor to have lavish religious ceremonies. So basically, they go to synagogue, they go to temple, and they have all these ceremonies where they pray and they offer God their tithes, and then they go out and mistreat people. And Amos says, you're a bunch of hypocrites. It kind of fits the parable in today's gospel. The parable of the rich man and Lazarus, the poor man. There's only one piece we need to add to make it complete in terms of fitting Amos. So the rich guy gets up every day. It says he dresses in purple, which was a color mainly for the rich. It took a lot of wealth in order to get the materials to make the purple dye and then dye the cloth purple. So usually if you saw purple, now you are rich. And then purple, fine linens, and dine sumptuously. So day in and day out, this guy would cross the path of Lazarus, dying at his gate because of hunger. As Lazarus laid there, open sores, God would, God, God's prayer. So here's this rich man in and out every day, crossing the path of Lazarus. Then it comes to the Sabbath day. So the rich man crosses the path of Lazarus and goes to worship. And he prays and he says, oh God, thank you for the blessings you give me. Here's my tithe. Let me offer more prayers. And then I'm going to go home and eat a nice meal. And he does. And he crosses the path of Lazarus. And he has this wonderful dinner. And he doesn't see that that's hypocrisy. He doesn't see that there's a connection or should be the connection between his prayer life in the temple and what was on the side. How you doing? You okay? Oh, you didn't even say hi to me. <laughs> How awesome. <laughs> I was at a meeting this week and at that meeting was a youth minister. And what they do for youth group is they read the gospel for the upcoming Sunday and they discuss it. And she shared with us that a lot of the kids were saying, why should we bother going to college? 
Why should we bother getting good jobs? It seems every time we read the Bible, if you're wealthy, it's sinful. And she said, no, that's not what it's saying. What it's saying is, what are you doing with your wealth? Are you helping the poor, helping those in need, or not? And that's where it comes in. And so as we talked about it, it's like, well, it's not just the material wealth either. It's whatever gifts God has given you. And when we leave this place, whatever we have is a gift from God. We're called to share. So when we come here on Sunday mornings, whatever's going out on in the world, you bring them. If you have concerns about your family, you bring them here. If you have concerns about justice and peace in the world, you bring them here. If you have desires to grow in holiness, you bring them here. But then whatever you experience here, we are called to bring out into the world with us when we leave. To affect all the people that we encounter out in the world. And so basically, Amos and the Gospel are just saying, look, if you're going to have this God thing going on, have it going on all the time, everywhere, with everybody. In that CMA video, that little boy was so precious. God is in everyone. And when you help someone out, you're helping God. And then God fills your heart with love. That's the bottom line. That's it in a nutshell. So maybe we can be inspired today. Take a good look when you leave here, wherever you go, whoever you meet. Do you have some time to give to them, to help them in their poverty? Do you have some talent to help them in their poverty? Do you have financial resources to help them in their poverty? Do you have love to share with them, to help them in their poverty? Let's see what God asks us to do today. May we stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father of Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ. The only God, the Son of God, born the Father before all ages, God from God, light and light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, God substantial to the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate in the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, He was crucified on the conscious Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we ask God to help us in all of our needs, may we be mindful of those who need around us. This morning we pray for church leaders in the United States as they work to find a place for our church in a pluralistic society. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord our prayer. And for an end to poverty and hunger in the world through the actions of leaders and nations who learn to see the need and address it. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord our prayer. For our parish community, that we may recognize those who are like Lazarus in our midst and offer them the comfort and assistance that they need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, and we pray for all animals that work for and with us and give us companionship and pleasure as we remember St. Francis this week. We pray to the Lord. Lord, and we pray for all the 
men and women serving in our armed forces and for their families and their loved ones. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are ill, for those in hospitals, at home, and our residents in Seneca View, Balls Home, and other nursing facilities. But this morning, we especially ask your prayers for babies Morgan and Robert Jansen, Louis Mello, Louis Vicchio, Tim Day, Brett Wicker, Bill Roberts, Paula Chamberlain. Karen Hobbs, Sully and Kay Inamorato, Nancy Russell, Ed, Ed Balthazar, Alice Powers, Jack Pastor, Robert Haler, and those whose names are listed in the bulletin on the prayer plaque and the intentions in the books of request that our love and prayers will bring them the healing and the peace of Jesus. Pray to the Lord. Lord, we are forever. And now we pray for the faithful departed whose lifelong vigil for the Lord has ended, that they will share in the joy of the eternal banquet, and for the parishioners of the Schuyler Catholic community for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we are forever. And now we pray for the intentions spoken in our hearts. without bound. So as we ask you to help us in our lives, help us show our gratitude by tending to the needs of those around us. We ask all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join me in singing our offertory hymn number 686. Here I am, Lord, number 686.
be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father.
you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Gather with Francis our Pope, the order of bishops and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome you into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her husband, the apostles, the martyrs, Benedict, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united, whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, the Holy Spirit will upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Let us end this celebration singing number 734, No Longer Strangers. Number seven, three, four. <coughs>